this is the Sigma 14mm f1.8 art lens. And the reason I'm so excited is because this is a landscape astrophotographer's dream lens. It is super wide at 14mm you can get a lot of the landscape in as well as a lot of the stunning night sky. And with the f1.8 aperture you can let in so much light onto your sensor. And in fact, this is the fastest super wide angle lens ever made. Sigma have totally defied the laws of physics to create this lens. I'm super excited to try it out. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm really going to push this lens to its limits. And I'm going to try and photograph the Milky Way without a tripod, just handheld. Practically speaking, it's a stupid idea. I just want to push this lens to its limits and then I'll use it a bit more practically and a bit more how I would on a day-to-day -day basis. But before I do anything, I need a coffee. So I've come to the Elan Valley Dark Sky Park in mid Wales. This is one of the darkest places in Wales and it's an area I've really fallen in love with over the last year. And you might be able to see that the Milky Way is just above the tower there and the water is overflowing the reservoir. Hopefully later we can get some shots of the water coming over the damn walls. But for now I've got the Sigma 14mm, I'm going to use the Sony a7S II so I can pump it to a really high ISO. Now typically there's a rule that says the longest shutter speed you can use is 1 divided by your focal length. So with a 14mm, 1 over 14, you can expect to be able to get away with 1 over 15 seconds of shutter speed. However the Sony a7S II has steady shot built in so the sensor is stabilised. I should be able to get away with longer exposures and I'm using the Sigma MC11 adapter to use a Canon mount Sigma lens on a Sony camera but all of the Sony features like steady shot will still work. So I'm gonna make sure I get a good steady stance and I'm gonna whoop. <laughs> so I'm just gonna play around with the different settings and see if I can get a shot. I mean, they're not bad. Like, I was shooting at ISOs of 25,600, 51,200, 102,400. So the signal to noise ratio is really poor. But I mean, the fact that you can actually shoot the Milky Way handheld is absurd. Now, I'm going to have a better review when I get home and I can put them onto the computer and see how much noise we can remove from the images. So this image turned out way better than I was expecting it to. This is the image straight out of camera and you can see it's really noisy and the, the shadow area is really dark so this is after some Lightroom adjustment and I also did some noise reduction you can see plus 25 on the luminance, nearly 50 on the colour and this has cleaned it up quite well and you can still see some detail there in the tower. Then I took the image into Nick Define 2 software, did some further noise reduction before bringing it back into Photoshop, doing some contrast adjustments, adding a bit of sharpening. And the final image is surprisingly clean. It cleaned up really nice and the detail that's left, even after that aggressive noise reduction, is so impressive. And I think this is testament to how well this lens resolves detail because noise reduction algorithms, they're programmed to look for edges and to try and retain detail in those edges by not blurring them and smoothening them out. So I think because this lens resolves details so well, the noise reduction software has an easy job of knowing where to do the noise reduction and where not. And I've been left with a really nice image considering it was only a one second exposure at ISO 51200, which is insane. <laughs> So then I decided to stick the lens and camera on a tripod and needless to say I was pretty impressed by the light gathering capabilities of f1.8. Holy crap! This lens is like, it's like a, 
a light vacuum. It's like I've stuck a black hole on the front of my camera and it's just sucking in all the light and swallowing it up. That is insane. Woo! The resulting image is obviously a lot cleaner, sharper, more detailed. The color rendition is beautiful. I mean, just look at the detail. It's so sharp. Everything's just crisp and nice. You can see the detail in the stones there, just these edges. You gotta be careful with these edges. Like, it's so easy to over sharpen images from this lens. And look, this is f1.8. It just looks so good. Then I decided to go to the other side of the dam and see the water coming over the walls and to, to use the lens a bit more practically as I would on a sort of regular basis. come to the other side of the reservoir I really wanted to see the water rushing over the dam hopefully you can hear me because the water is really loud I've got a nice composition with the Milky Way just high above the dam the Cygnus region of the Milky Way and I'm gonna keep playing with this lens and see how I get on So whenever I see the raw files in Lightroom, you're just hit with that sharpness and the detail. The images just look so good, but it's not without its flaws. In the top right corner, I mean, this was shot at f2.2. You can still see some coma in the stars. They start to look like sort of flying saucers. How detrimental that is to the image is, is up to you. But if you're printing large prints, it's going to be noticeable. And in the top left corner, you can see the stars are a bit elongated, but I think this is more to do with the, the lens distortion rather than coma. And there's still a little bit of coma going on, but it's not too bad. But it, it's just that detail in the center of the image that, that keeps your eye drawn in. So you're not gonna pay much attention to the corners, but if you're after perfection and if you're printing large prints, this, this is something to be aware of. There's still even a bit of coma present at f2.8 and in the other image I noticed there was a little bit of sharpness drop off in the corner. If I lift the exposure a little bit so you can see, it's kind of nice and sharp here and then the sharpness just whoop, just drops off. I mean it is the extreme corner and typically I vignette my images anyway so it's not going to be that noticeable. Now, personally, the, the detail in the frame as a whole, I think more than makes up for a little bit of softness in the extreme corners and that, that little bit of coma. But when you're paying £1,700 for a lens, I think you have a right to, to scrutinize a little bit. Anyway, I couldn't really find any more compositions at that location, so I decided to jump in the van, head off and, and see what I could find. The reason I swore there was because I had been shooting that dam for like 20, 30 minutes and I was like, ooh, I need some B-roll for the vlog. And as I was recording, you saw that meteor just shoot, shoot across the sky, which would have been nice to capture in a photograph, but at least I filmed it. That happens all too often. You finish shooting and then shoom, you'll just see a nice, huge meteor. 
anyway, the resulting image, I really like this one. We've got the, the Cygnus region of the Milky Way, and you can see the spiral galaxy M31 there, otherwise known as Andromeda. And this is actually a panorama. It's four landscape images uh, stitched into a panorama because that I was so close to the damn wall. And even at 14 mil, I needed to go landscape to get the whole of the dam in and then panned it up to get the Milky Way in there. And I think this was a good exercise because the, the images stitched really easily and I never do panoramas with my Samyang 14 mil because the distortion is so bad that you just have a nightmare trying to stitch them together. So the, the distortion and the vignetting on this lens is really well controlled. I haven't mentioned the vignetting until now because I, I wasn't even noticing it in the shots. But I think stitching these four images together is testament to how well the, the, the distortion and the vignetting has been handled in this lens. I also took a load of other images that night which I'll put into an article on my website. I'll stick the link below so you guys can go and check them out and I'll put some sort of 100% zooms of the coma and whatnot on there as well. But in conclusion, the Sigma 14mm f1.8 art lens, I can sum it up in three words, it's a beast. It's a beast in that it's big and it's heavy, but it's a beast in its performance. The sharpness and the detail it resolves, it just second to none, it's, it's in a league of its own. I think the only thing to compete with this lens right now is the Samyang 14mm f2.4. I'm gonna try and get my hands on one of those soon and I'll let you know my thoughts between the two. But this lens is, is absolutely phenomenal. So if you've made it this far into the vlog, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because in my next video, I'm gonna be taking the Sigma 14, the Sigma 20 and the MC11 adapter onto a helicopter at night and I'm really gonna put them through his paces. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck, clear skies. And um, I, I, I haven't got a joke for you this week. Damn. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's terrible, I'm sorry.